Sun. Once upon a time, there lived a family who had a daughter named Cinderella. They were a very happy family. However, once their kind-hearted mother suddenly passed away, their happiness came to an end. Cinderella's father married another woman soon after. The woman had two spoiled and spiteful daughters. They were just as unkind as their mother. They all came to live in the house. Cinderella now had two stepsisters and a stepmother. Everyone loved Cinderella, who was incredibly kind and beautiful. She had long blonde hair, ocean blue coloured eyes and delicate feet and hands. She was a girl who enjoyed helping everyone around her, cooked delicious meals, loved plants and protected animals. Out of jealousy, the stepsisters made sure to make Cinderella's life miserable. They made her do all the housework and used her as the housemaid. Her only friend was a tabby cat. When she finished her chores, she would take her cat on her lap, sit by the fireplace and tell him about her misfortune. She always told him how much she missed her mother. That's why Cinderella was nicknamed Cinder Cat. Unfortunately, soon after, her father died too. The stepsisters and stepmother gave Cinderella a room in the attic. You can't stay on the same floor as us. You're better suited up there. Please, let me and my cat get warmed up by the fireplace. Only after we go to bed. The ashes of the fireplace should be enough for you. Your clothes are ripped and torn. We don't want to see you around. Poor Cinderella accepted her fate. Every night she would sit next to the fireplace and try to warm herself with the cinders left in it. One day, a soldier stopped by their home to invite all girls who were of age to marry to a ball at the palace. Our king is to leave his throne to his son. The only condition is for him to marry a suitable girl. How many girls are there in this house who are of age? Joyously, the mother presented her own two daughters. I have two beautiful girls. Then who is that girl that I see in the kitchen wiping the floors? She's a housemaid. How could we bring her to the palace? It doesn't matter. I must write her name down as well. Even if you write her name down, it won't matter. She has no clothes or shoes to wear. Go ahead, write it down. <laughs> Cinderella begged her stepmother. Please, give me one of my sister's dresses, so I can come too. No, you will not go. You will clean the floors until we come back. Do you think the prince will choose you over my daughters, the cinder cat? The three of them mocked Cinderella and chased her away. Finally, the day of the ball arrived. Ooh. All dressed up, they went to the ball and left Cinderella behind. Cinderella cried hopelessly. Right at that moment, a glowing fairy appeared before Cinderella. Don't worry, I'll get you to the ball. Who are you? I'm the good fairy who helps kind-hearted girls. Your mother has sent me here to help you. She is watching over you from above. Let's get to it. Find me a large pumpkin and six mice. Cinderella did what the fairy asked of her right away. She brought the pumpkin and the mice in her room, who were already her friends, came running to help. With the wand in her hand, the fairy turned the pumpkin into a fantastic carriage. 
four mice into white horses, one mouse into a coachman, and one into a footman. Finally, it was Cinderella's turn. The fairy touched her head with her wand and turned her into a wonderful princess. Remember, don't stay past midnight. The spell will break after 12 o'clock. You must leave the ball before 12. Good luck! Cinderella got in the carriage and went straight to the palace. As soon as she entered the ballroom, everyone stared at her and held their breath. They were curious to learn who she was. She must be a princess from another country. They asked themselves who else would arrive in such a magnificent carriage and wear exquisite jewels. The prince, who saw Cinderella, came up to her immediately. Hmm. My lady, will you dance with me? With pleasure, His Royal Highness. It was love at first sight. The prince danced with Cinderella all night. The king and queen also really liked Cinderella. This girl would suit us and our palace as well. She is noble and beautiful. We have found our bride. All the other girls at the ball, including the stepmother and stepsisters, were huffing and puffing with jealousy. Where do you come from? Where do you live? What's your name? Time passed by really quickly. Cinderella, who saw that it was almost 12 o'clock, left the prince unexpectedly and ran out of the palace. As she hurried down the palace stairs, she lost one of her glass shoes. But because she was in such a hurry, she left it behind, got in the carriage and went home. At exactly midnight, everything turned into what it was before. The prince who had run after Cinderella was in complete shock. He hadn't been able to catch up to her, but he found her glass shoe on the stairs. When Cinderella came home, she was surprised at what she saw. The house was sparkling clean. There was even a hot soup brewing on the stove. The fairy had sorted this out too. When Cinderella went to her room, she was very sad. But what now? I'll never be able to see the prince again. Don't worry. Everything will be okay. Meanwhile, the prince thought only about the beautiful girl who had run away from the ball. I must find her. I will take no other as my queen. Tomorrow we will try this shoe on every girl's foot that attended the ball last night and across the city. If the shoe fits someone, then that girl will be my queen. The next day, soldiers walked door to door and asked all the girls who had attended the ball to try on the glass shoe. Everyone wore the shoe with excitement, but it didn't fit anyone. Finally, it was time for Cinderella's home. Everyone was incredibly excited. The stepsisters spent hours massaging and creaming their feet in order to shorten them and they locked Cinderella in the attic. Yet, the shoe didn't fit either of the sisters' feet. Come on! Just as the soldiers were about to leave, they heard a sound from upstairs. Oh. Cinderella had managed to catch their attention by knocking down a cupboard. What's that sound? Who's upstairs? The house cat. There's no one. No cat can make such a noise. Don't lie. Let's go upstairs and have a look. Immediately. Huh? They got Cinderella out of the locked room and asked her to try on the glass shoe. Oh. The shoe fit perfectly. Cinderella showed them the other pair.
the soldiers knew that they had found the princess and ran to the palace to deliver the good news. The prince joyously arrived at Cinderella's house and recognized her right away. Will you marry me and be my princess? Having received the answer as yes, he took her to the palace. Everything Cinderella told him like about told everything that had happened to her. Everything was fine. They got so married with a wedding lasting 40 days and 40 nights. The first thing Cinderella did was to have her tabby cat brought to the palace. They lived happily ever after, and the good fairy looked over them at all times. Once upon a time, in a far away kingdom, there lived a beautiful queen and a handsome king. The queen was not only beautiful, but she was kind and generous. Her people loved her dearly. She always helped people and wanted her country to always be in abundance. The queen always longed to have a daughter. One day, as she sat embroidering by the window, she daydreamed of her future daughter. In a daze, she accidentally pricked her finger with her embroidery needle. The blood from her finger dripped onto the white fabric she was embroidering. At that very moment, a shooting star crossed the sky. The Queen made a wish. Dear God, please send me a daughter. Let her be so beautiful that everyone admires her. Let her have pink cheeks, black hair like mine, her lips as red as this drop of blood, her eyes as bright as diamonds, and her skin as white as this very cloth. She should always smell like the flowers in my garden. Let her teeth be as white as the pearls on my neck. A short time after that, her wish came true and she shared the good news with the king and announced that they were expecting a baby. My queen, wish what you will from me. I'll get you the most wonderful gift. My health is not as good as it used to be. What I ask of you is to protect our child from all evil. Please promise me that you'll protect her. There's nothing more I wish for. When the time came, the queen gave birth to a very beautiful girl. Just as she had wished for, her daughter had black hair, red lips, bright eyes, skin as white as snow, and smelled like flowers. They named her Snow White because of the whiteness of her skin. <laughs> Soon after, the queen's health deteriorated and she passed away. <laughs> the young king was very sad. While he mourned his beloved wife, he also tried to raise Snow White as best he could. When Snow White turned five, a big ball was organized at the palace. The king was celebrating his daughter's birthday and also choosing a new queen. At the ball, there was a beautiful woman who had magical powers. She used these powers to dance with the king and cast a spell on him and married the king and became the queen. Snow White's stepmother was a very beautiful woman, but she was also vain, cruel and evil. From the day she arrived at the palace, she despised Snow White. She saw her as her rival. The queen also had a magic mirror. She always consulted the mirror about the future and would ask, Mirror, mirror, on the wall, who's the fairest of them all? My dear queen, it's you. You're the most beautiful woman in the world. And so, time passed by. Snow White became a very beautiful young girl. Those who saw her could not look away. As she strolled in the palace gardens, the wind that brushed her hair would spread her flowery scent. Birds and butterflies would always follow her around. And her voice was so heavenly that when she sang, birds in the gardens would go silent and listen to her. One day, the queen asked her mirror. 
Mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all? My queen, you are very beautiful, but the most beautiful girl is Snow White. The jealous and cruel queen got so angry that she hurled the bottle in her hand at the magical mirror. Oh. How? How is that possible? No one's more beautiful than me. Summon the princess at once. Meanwhile, she had locked up the king in the palace dungeon and told everyone that he was away working for his people. She also summoned the palace hunter and gave him strict orders. I want you to kill Snow White and bring her heart to me as proof. Snow White, who had no idea of her fate, came to see the evil queen. Dear Snow White, you haven't been out for days. You must be bored inside the castle. I'd like you to bring me some strawberries from the forest. This way you'll be able to get some fresh air. You'll have a good time, don't worry. I'll send you my trustworthy hunter with you. As the princess picked strawberries with the hunter, they got deep into the forest. The poor hunter was very sad. How can I harm someone with such a good heart and such beauty? There must be another way. The hunter couldn't bring himself to kill her. They sat under a tree and he told her about the queen's evil plan. My princess, please go far away. If the queen finds out what I've done, she will kill both of us. He immediately hunted an animal and brought its heart to the queen. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> mm. The princess spent the night under that tree. She was so scared. dawn, she went on her journey. After a long walk, she reached a small house and went inside. She looked around in amazement. What is this place? Everything is so small and there's seven of everything. Seven small chairs, seven pairs of forks and spoons. Since she was so hungry, she made soup with the ingredients she found in the house. She ate and went upstairs. <sighs> and then she fell asleep in one of the small beds. At night, the house owners returning from the mine were actually the seven dwarves. Their names were Doc, Dopey, Happy, Grumpy, Sneezy, Bashful, and sleepy. Hey, what's this? It smells like delicious soup. No, it's like someone entered the house. Come, look, there's a girl sleeping here. The commotion woke up Snow White. She was scared when she first saw them. She then told them everything that happened to her. My name is Snow White. I don't mean any harm. I don't have a place to go. That's why I took shelter here. Please, let me stay. Of course, princess. We are not going to let you stay alone in a forest. Don't worry. <laughs> you are our first guest who makes such delicious soup. <laughs> Time passed by, days and weeks. Snow White and the Seven Dwarves were laughing, having fun together, and living a peaceful life. <laughs> Meanwhile, the evil queen, not knowing that Snow White was still alive, asked the mirror again. Mirror, mirror, on the wall, who's the fairest of them all? <laughs> 
My queen, you are beautiful, but Snow White, who lives with the seven dwarves, is more beautiful. Ah! How is this possible? The hunter must have lied to me! First, I will get rid of Snow White, and then I will teach the hunter a lesson. She immediately worked on an evil plan. She poisoned an apple and disguised herself as an old woman to trick Snow White. Hello! Anybody home? I'm so hungry and I ran out of food! The seven dwarves had warned Snow White to not open the door to anyone. But Snow White felt sorry for the old woman that came to her door and so let her in without a doubt. Please come in. Welcome. Thanks, my child. I got so tired and hungry in the forest. Do you have something to eat? Yes, of course. I have some soup. After finishing her soup, the evil queen disguised as the old woman offered the poisoned apple to Snow White. The princess took a bite and fell on the floor, huh? falling asleep. <laughs> the old woman turned back into the evil queen and happily went back to her palace. When the seven dwarves who came back from the mine in the evening saw her laying on the floor, they thought that she had died and so were very sad. We should make her eternal sleep comfortable. Let's make a nice bed for her. A handsome prince who was walking through the forest heard the seven dwarves crying. He got curious and approached them. Oh my! What's going on here? He was very surprised when he looked to see who was laying in the crystal bed surrounded by flowers. She was the girl who had been in his dreams for days. The smell of her hair was still all over the forest. Who is this beautiful girl? Her name is Snow White. We haven't been able to wake her up. They told the prince everything that had happened. The prince lifted the crystal cover to give a farewell kiss to the girl of his dreams. He kissed her on the cheek. At that moment, something unexpected happened. The spell broke and a miracle occurred. Snow White opened her eyes and got up in bed. The seven dwarves and the prince were very happy. You are the girl of my dreams, Snow White. This is the best day of my life. Will you marry me? First, I need to find my father and tell him about everything that happened, and also get his blessing. They went back to the palace and got the king out of the dungeon. The evil queen fled in fear. The prince and Snow White got married and lived happily ever after. Once upon a time, in a small house there lived a young married couple. They were a very happy couple and were expecting a baby. I know it's important for our baby to be healthy, but I do hope we have a daughter, my love. Yes, I would love to have a daughter too. God willing, we'll have a daughter that will look like you. The day of the birth was getting closer and the young mother excitedly awaited the birth of her baby. Every day the mother would look out the window and over the high wall and admire her neighbor's garden filled with flowers and fruits. One day she noticed a yellow leaf plant that she had never seen before. I wonder what the name of that plant is. It smells wonderful. I'm sure it tastes amazing too. I have to eat that plant. I will go straight to my neighbor and ask her. Without wasting any time, the young mother left the house. But she had no idea that her next door neighbor was a cruel witch. 
She knocked on the door, unaware of the danger that awaited her. Hmm. Ooh. <laughs> Hello, neighbor. The yellow plant in your garden smells amazing. I'm pregnant and really craving for it. Is it an edible plant? Of course. I can give you a little. It tastes incredible, and it's really good for humans. Then it'll be good for my baby too. Of course, dear neighbor, especially for expecting mothers. But remember, because it's so valuable, you may only take one. <laughs> Everything is going just as I planned. The young woman finished eating the piece she had taken as soon as she got home, but she wanted to eat more. Bring me more! If I don't eat it, I can't have this baby. Ho ho ho! Don't worry, I'll do everything I can to bring you more of that yellow plant. As night fell and it got dark, the helpless husband climbed over the tall wall and took the plant that his wife wanted. This went on for some time. Every night, the young man secretly entered the garden, but he was uneasy about entering his neighbor's garden without permission. The bad witch had actually grown this plant to set up a trap to them. She knew that her neighbor was expecting a baby, and that she would definitely crave for this with its smell. She had her eye on the baby for a long time. She was going to take the baby one way or another. One evening, as the man entered the garden again, the witch caught him red-handed. She now had the appearance of a witch. She was very ugly and was extremely scary-looking. The poor man was frightened. Please forgive me. My wife is pregnant and she can't stop eating this plant. I was forced to do this because you said she could only take one. I know this is wrong, but if she doesn't eat it, I'm afraid that my wife will die. I'm in a very tough situation. <laughs> I'll accept your apology only with one condition: you must give me the baby that is to be born. If not, I'll destroy all of you. The man had to accept this condition. When the time of the birth arrived, a beautiful baby girl was born. The witch went to the house immediately. Her name shall be Rapunzel. You shall raise her until she turns one. In exactly one year, I will come and take her from you. The helpless couple accepted. When Rapunzel turned one, the witch came and took the crying baby away from her mother and father, and locked up the baby in a tower in the middle of the forest. She was going to raise the baby there. Many years passed. Rapunzel was now a beautiful young girl. As she had never cut her hair, it was several meters long. Her hair was golden blonde. She had deep green eyes. Whenever the witch went to the tower, she would call out to her, "My dear blonde-haired girl, I'm here. Let your hair down." Rapunzel would throw her long braid down, and the witch would climb up to the tower using her hair. Rapunzel thought that the witch was her mother, as she had never seen anyone else other than the witch until now. Rapunzel thought that she and her mother were the only ones in this world. She had a wonderful voice. She sang all day long until nightfall. Her voice echoed across the forest, and all the birds would fly to the window to listen to her. Birds were her only friends. One day, a prince was wandering around the forest. When he heard Rapunzel singing, he wondered where this marvelous sound was coming from. As he followed the direction of the sound, he approached the tower and realized the voice was coming from there. I must meet the girl with this amazing voice. I wonder how I can go up this tower. As he desperately walked round and round the tower, he suddenly saw a witch calling to the top of the tower. He hid behind a tree at once and watched. 
my dear blonde head girl. I'm here. Let your hair down. Rapunzel let down her braided hair, and the witch climbed up to the tower. I found how to go up the tower. Having waited for the witch to leave, the prince now called out to the tower, impersonating the voice of the witch. My girl, please let down your beautiful blonde hair again. I forgot something up there. I'm letting it down right away, mother. With one swift move, she let down her hair again. The prince climbed up the tower using her hair and met Rapunzel. It was the first time in her life that the beautiful girl was seeing another person. Ah, who are you? Why are you here? Where is my mother? There's no need to be afraid. I am the prince of this country. Your wonderful voice brought me here. <gasps> to come up here, I had to impersonate your mother's voice. Rapunzel, who at first was very frightened, slowly realized that he wasn't a bad person. The prince was already charmed by her beauty. Days and months passed by. The prince was coming to the tower every day. When they spent time together, they didn't realize how fast the time passed. Then he finally proposed to Rapunzel. Rapunzel, I want to live with you for the rest of my life. Will you marry me? Uh, of course I'll marry you. I must now return to the palace. Hmm. I will try and find a solution to get you out of here at once. Rapunzel was very excited that she would finally see the outside world once she married the prince. She was so bored of living alone in the tower for all those years. He held Rapunzel's hair and headed down the tower. Unfortunately, the witch was there too and saw the prince. She immediately understood what was going on. She raged with anger. As Rapunzel was pulling her hair back up again, the witch held onto it and climbed up. She was so annoyed and furious. What's going on? Who's that just left? I've been hiding you up here to protect you from evil, but you, you've been talking to strangers and making friends with them. He's the prince of this country. He asked for my hand in marriage and I accepted. I'm so happy, mother. I was waiting for you to come and tell you all about it. What? What nonsense is this? I'll show you. The witch was so angry that with a pair of scissors she cut Rapunzel's long hair short as can be. And with her magic, she then sent her to a very far away country. When the prince arrived at the tower the next day, he had no idea that the witch was waiting for him in the tower. Hi Rapunzel! I'm here! Let down your hair please! The witch let down the long braid that she had cut from Rapunzel's hair. When the prince reached the window of the tower, the witch was there to meet him. He was terrified the moment he saw her. What a surprise, huh? You thought you were going to be able to take my girl away who I've hidden for years? <laughs> As the witch let go of the braid, the terrified prince found himself on the floor. He fell on top of the bushes, but since he hit his head, he was blinded. Rapunzel was ever present in the prince's mind. So mounted on his horse, he searched for her everywhere. He swore that even if he had to go to the end of the world, he would find her. He searched and searched and searched for a very long time. Finally, one day, he heard a song. The voice was familiar to him. Ah, this is Rapunzel's voice. I finally found her. Galloping on his horse, he headed straight towards the sweet voice. He came to the door of the house Rapunzel was staying in. Rapunzel, I'm here. Open the door. I can't believe it. Is it really you? As Rapunzel opened the door, she cried when she saw the prince. She cried so much that her tears fell on the prince's face as he was kneeling. Her tears were miraculous, joyful tears. Suddenly, the blind prince opened his eyes. They hugged each other joyfully and celebrated this miracle. The prince was finally able to propose officially. 
They returned to the palace and started preparing for the wedding. Upon their return, Rapunzel and the prince looked for her real parents so they could share their news. They were incredibly happy to be reunited with their daughter after all these years. They had a beautiful wedding and they all lived happily ever after. Once upon a time, a long, long time ago, in a faraway land, there lived a king. This king had twelve daughters. All his daughters were incredibly beautiful. The king did not allow them to leave the palace. They were only allowed to walk around the palace gardens. While the king and his daughters carried on with their lives, one morning as his daughters sat at the table for breakfast, oh. he noticed that their shoes were worn out. Although the king was very confused by this, he ordered his servants to buy new shoes for all his twelve daughters. Ever since that day, every morning at breakfast, the king noticed that his daughter's shoes were worn and dirty. The king couldn't put his finger on what was going on. Despite their doors being locked at night, the mystery of the worn-out shoes continued. To solve this, the king came up with a very clever plan. Soldiers, spread the news across the country. Whoever solves this problem will marry one of my daughters and become king when I die. These young men only have three days to find out why my daughter's shoes are worn out every morning. However, if they can't figure it out, they will be thrown in the dungeon. The soldiers spread the news across the entire country. Many young men were turning up at the palace gates to solve this mystery. Yet, all of them were falling asleep outside the daughter's room and were being thrown into the dungeon. There was a kind, handsome young man who lived in a village near the palace. He had always liked the king's youngest daughter. The young man had no family except for his grandmother. So, they lived together. One day, his grandmother came up with an idea. Why don't you try your chance at solving this mystery? You always said that you liked the king's youngest daughter. Until now, hundreds have gone to the palace to try their chance. None of them have succeeded. It will be impossible for me too. Plus, we're very poor. The king will never give his daughter in marriage to me. You must be mad, Grandma. Nonsense. You do what I say. You will succeed. I'm giving you a magical cloak that belonged to your father. Oh. When you wear this, you will become invisible. And one more thing. Do not eat or drink anything from the palace. Good luck, my son. Although the young man was incredibly amazed by the invisible cloak, he immediately set off to the palace to try his chance. The guards led him to the princess's rooms, just like the others who tried their chance before him. At night, the oldest daughter popped a sleeping pill into a glass of water, left the room and handed the glass to the young man waiting by the door. It's hot. You must be thirsty. Here. If you like, I can bring you another glass. Thank you. Yes, I was incredibly thirsty. The thirsty young man <laughs> drank the water and slept all the way till morning. The next day, while waiting, another girl brought a glass of lemonade. Unable to resist, the young man drank this too. He went straight to the room assigned to him and snored the night away. 
When he woke in the morning, he said, How stupid I am! How could I believe these girls? My grandma had warned me about not eating or drinking anything. Tonight is my last night. I must succeed. He went in front of the door again. This time one of the girls wanted to trick him with juice. The young man pretended to drink the juice while the girl watched, but the minute she turned around and entered her room, he poured it into a plant pot. He pretended to sleep lying next to the plant and snoring. Go and take a look. Has the boy outside fallen asleep? One of the girls peeked through the door and checked the young man. Can't you hear? He's snoring away. It's okay. We are free now. At midnight, when the young man wore the cloak, he became invisible. He slowly entered the girls' room. The girls were wearing beautiful dresses. They had brushed their hair and were all made up. There was a large mirror in their room. They all stood in front of it. The oldest daughter touched the mirror and blew a kiss. The mirror immediately slid to the side and a door with stairs appeared, leading down to a chamber. The young man watched in shock as the girls, one by one, went down the stairs. Of course, he followed them right away. As he went down the stairs, he accidentally tripped on something, fell and held on tight to the skirt of one of the princesses in front of him. Oh, what is that? Someone's pulling on my skirt. There's no one here. You must be imagining things. They went down hundreds of stairs. Whoa. Finally, they arrived in a forest. The leaves in the forest were gold, the branches were silver, and the top of the trees were filled with diamonds. As the young man watched in awe, he also took one of each item to keep. He wanted evidence upon his return. They walked and walked down a very long path through the forest. At the end of the road, a lake appeared before them. There were exactly 12 boats waiting for the princesses. While each one of them climbed on the boats, young oarsmen were helping them get in. Finally, the young man jumped into the last boat. Gosh! This boat is a little heavier than usual today. It's like it's carrying three people. Have you gained weight, princess? What? A palace decorated with magnificent lights appeared on the opposite shore of the lake. Music could be heard from everywhere. They all entered this palace and began to dance like crazy with their companions. <laughs> All the glasses in the palace were made of crystal, and all cutlery made of silver. Ooh. As the young man watched this fantastic event, he wanted to eat a piece of cake and drink some water. He wasn't noticed while he was eating a piece of cake from a golden plate, but was caught while drinking water from the crystal glass. Oh wow, I can't believe it. Look there, the glass is levitating. It's like someone is drinking water. Upon hearing these screams, the young man dropped the glass and it shattered into a million pieces. You're imagining things. We are really tired of dancing. You must have bumped into the glass. Come on, it's almost morning. Let's go back to the palace. But, but... It was time for the girls to return to the palace. The oldest daughter gathered all her sisters. They returned to the palace the same way they came in, with the young man following them at all times. <laughs> the young man was thrilled to have solved the mystery of the shoes. He immediately appeared before the king. Your Majesty, I respectfully salute you, Your Highness. I have solved the mystery of why your daughter's shoes are worn out after just one day. Every day, your daughters go to a magical forest head to a palace and dance the night away. This is why their shoes are worn out. The king was shocked at this news 
and didn't want to believe what he heard. Today was your last day. How could I know that you're not lying to me in order not to get thrown in the dungeon? Sir, I have plenty of evidence. A silver tree branch, a gold leaf, a food made of diamonds and a crystal glass. Oh. The king was surprised at what he saw, but was also pleased that the mystery was finally solved. He followed the young man down the path, went to all the places they had been, and saw with his own eyes that the young man was telling the truth. Yes, you were right. Tell me, which of my daughters do you want to marry? Your Majesty, if she also accepts, I would like to marry your youngest daughter. And of course, if you see fit. The young man and the young princess lived happily ever after. The young man also had his grandmother brought to the palace, since he owed her everything. Even though the other girls weren't so pleased with what had happened, they promised that they would never go anywhere again without permission. Once upon a time, there lived a rich merchant. He was so rich that he didn't even know how much money he had. This merchant had three daughters. Two of them were selfish, lazy and unkind. But the third one was incredibly polite, generous and loving. With her flowing brown hair and big green eyes, she was both beautiful and of good character, so her father simply called her Beauty. Beauty never wanted to upset her father. Her sisters, on the other hand, only thought of money, dresses and jewels. This is why their father loved Beauty the most. One evening, Beauty dreamed of a tall, handsome, dark-haired prince. In her dream, she was wearing a marvellous dress while dancing with the prince. At the end of their dance, the prince gifted her a rose. When she woke up, she was still smiling and dancing with the effect of her dream. Her sisters watched in shock, filled with jealousy. Days went by, and one day, Beauty's father received terrible news. A powerful storm had destroyed all of the merchant's oh. ships. They had all sunk and he had lost all his wealth. We've lost everything, girls. The only thing we have left is this house. I'm very sorry. Don't be sad, father. Nothing really matters as long as we're all together. I'm going to pray every day for you to smile again and for your luck to turn. I hope that sometime soon we will be rich again. Not long after, they received good news that one of their ships hadn't sunk. Upon hearing this news, their father with oh. joy headed to the port. We're probably safe now. We're rich again. After I sell all the merchandise, what would you like me to bring you? Beautiful dresses and shoes. Precious jewels. My dear father, just come back to us safe and sound. I don't want anything. But if you can bring me a red rose, I'll be very happy. The merchant bid his girls farewell and went to the port. But when he arrived, he <gasps> couldn't believe his eyes. The ship was destroyed and all the merchandise had fallen into the sea and was lost. So, nothing had changed. They were still poor. Sadly, on his way back home, without realizing, he entered the forest. For some time, he tried to find the road, but at this point, he and his horse were both very tired. Suddenly, he spotted a light in the distance. It was getting dark, so he hurried and headed towards the light. A magnificent palace appeared before him. It was a palace with lights all around it and a huge garden. The palace had a mysterious feel. When the merchant arrived at the garden gates, they opened spontaneously. Going through a path with lots of trees, he reached the door of the palace, which also opened spontaneously. Though the merchant didn't understand what was going on, he went inside. Good evening. Is anyone here? 
He walked past the huge living room and other rooms, asking if anyone was home. He suddenly found himself before a table full of different types of food, desserts and fruits. Since he was very hungry, he sat down and ate until he was full. Wandering in awe around the alluring rooms of the palace, he looked for a place to sleep. He found a beautiful bedroom on the top floor. Well, there's nothing to do now. When the owners of the palace arrive, I'll thank them for everything. He lay down on the bed and fell asleep. The next day, when he went downstairs, this time, he saw that a beautiful large breakfast table had been set for him. I think that luck has found me again. There's even fresh juice. But I have to go now. Even if I didn't get to meet you, thank you very much. Goodbye. He went out to the garden and just as he approached the gates, he saw a beautiful red rose. I'll take this rose for my daughter as a souvenir. Beauty will love it. He picked the rose. At the same time, he heard a noise behind him. When he turned around, there was a monster. It was a scary monster. Black hairy hands, huge mouth and eyes, and sharp teeth. I did everything to make you stay comfortable. Aren't you ashamed of picking the flower without permission? I'm sorry, sir. My intentions weren't bad. I have three girls. One of them asked me to bring back a rose for her. I picked it for my daughter. Please forgive me. So you have three daughters then? Yes, sir. Well, I will only forgive you on one condition. One of your daughters must come and stay with me willingly. If no one comes, I will punish you very badly. Here, I'm giving you my fastest horse. I expect both of you within a week. If not, you will pay the price for your insolence. The merchant, wanting so desperately to stay alive, climbed on the horse and went straight home. He explained to his daughters everything that had happened. Which one of you will come with me there? I can't live with the monster. Beauty is the one to be blamed. She should go. Yes, it's her fault that Dad encountered this monster. She should go. Okay, okay. Father, don't be upset. I will go willingly and I will save you. My beautiful girl. You're going because of me. I'm so sorry. Don't be sad, Father. Everything will be fine. When they arrived at the palace, everything was the same as before. The fire was burning in the fireplace, the table was full of food, and bright lights were lit everywhere. Since they were both hungry from the long journey, they sat at the table and had dinner. Not long after that, the monster headed downstairs. Good evening, and welcome. My name is Beast. Will you stay here with me? Yes, sir. I wanted that rose. It's not my father's fault. He only wanted to bring me a gift. Then your father will live tomorrow, and you will stay here and be my friend. The next day, Beauty's father left. I'll miss you very much. Forgive me, my dear. I'll miss you too. Please don't worry. Just take care of yourself. Waving, she bid her father farewell from the garden gates. Days went by, but she was incredibly sad. She cried every day. One night as she was crying, what will I do with the beast? How will I get used to this? He appeared before her. Good evening. How are you? Is your room comfortable? Do you need anything? Your wish is my command. But you coming here at your own will has made me incredibly happy. Ah, if only you like me a little. Is it because I'm ugly? Beauty always told him the truth. I don't like you, but I've gotten used to you. Just wait and see. One day I'll make you like me. You won't see the ugliness of my face, but you'll see the kindness of my heart. That's what's important. They were actually becoming quite good friends. They played piano together and sang songs. They wandered around the garden and fed the birds.
Beauty realised that Beast wasn't as ugly as she thought he was. In fact, she had started to like him. One night, she dreamed of her father and saw he had become really ill. <laughs> the next morning... Good morning. Last night I saw my father in my dream. He was very ill. Please let me go and visit my father for a week. I've missed him so much. Will you let me? Okay then. Exactly one week. If you go over one week and not come back, I will die here. Don't forget that. I promise. I'll see him and come right back. Then, let's put this magical heart-shaped medallion on your neck. If you make a wish while holding it tightly, it will come true. They parted in this way. I want to go to my father. She arrived at her father's house. Her father was so pleased to see her that he started feeling better almost immediately. I missed you so much, Beauty. I miss you too, Father. Her sisters didn't understand what just happened and how she just suddenly arrived. They were still jealous of Beauty. Beauty told her father everything. That she was now happy and that he shouldn't be sad anymore. She stayed a week at her father's house without realizing how time passed by. One day, she saw Beast in her dream lying on the floor. Thinking that he had died, she became incredibly frightened. It dawned on her that she was late by one day. She felt guilty because she hadn't kept her promise. He told me that if I stayed over a week that he would die. What selfishness this is! If something happened to him because of me, I will never be able to forgive myself. She immediately bid her father and sisters farewell, took the medallion in her hand, holding it tightly, kissed it and made her wish. She found herself in Beast's palace. Beast was on the floor with his eyes closed. Helpless, Beauty had no idea what to do. I shouldn't have left you alone. Please forgive me. <laughs> Beauty, thinking that she had lost Beast, kept on crying. Suddenly Beast opened his eyes. I finally realized how much I love you. Can you really love someone as ugly as me? Of course. I will never part with you again. Then will you marry me? Yes, yes. Suddenly, with a blinding light, Beast's face started to change. A handsome prince took his place. He was tall with thick dark hair. Oh! You're the prince that I was dancing with in my dream. Yes. An evil witch turned me into the beast. The only way for the spell to be broken was if a girl accepted my hand and married despite my ugliness. Thank you for saving me, Beauty. Not long after that, the prince and Beauty got married. They brought her merchant father and her sisters to the palace as well. They lived happily ever after. This was a victory of inner beauty. Once upon a time, in the deep sea, there was an underwater kingdom. The king watched over the kingdom along with his six beautiful daughters and his elderly mother. All the sea creatures lived peacefully and happily together. All six daughters of the king were beautiful. But the most beautiful one was the little mermaid. She had long red hair and ocean blue eyes. Their father would gather them around his throne every night and they would chat while sipping their seaweed tea. The king's greatest fear was that his girls would fall under the spell of the sun and choose to live above water. Because when a mermaid turned 18, she was allowed to swim to the surface and watch the world while enjoying the sun and the wind. My dear girls, according to the rules of our sea kingdom, it is forbidden to talk to humans. 
Their lives aren't like ours. We belong to the sea, and they belong to the land and air. Don't ever go near them. But father, even if they're different from us, I'm really curious about humans and want to see them. Of course, my little girl. You're almost 18. By listening to my word and without breaking the rules, one day you two will be able to go to the surface and watch the world while enjoying the sun and the wind. The little mermaid sisters would always tell her about everything they saw when they came back from the surface. You know what, little sis? There's a wonderful breeze up there. The sun is really warm. As huge ships pass by, we play with dolphins and we sunbathe on the rocks without letting anyone see us. There was nothing the little mermaid could do but to daydream and wait for her 18th birthday. I'm so excited, sis. I know I have to wait. In the meantime, I spend my time playing with Yum Yum and make pearl necklaces. Of course, for myself and you. <laughs> Yum Yum was a dolphin and was the little mermaid's best friend. At times, they would leave the palace to play tag at the bottom of the ocean. Yum yum can't catch me, if I hide can't find me. Yum yum can't catch me, if I hide can't find me. Yum yum can't catch me, if I hide can't find me. Yum yum can't catch me, if I hide can't find me. <laughs> yum yum, come find me. Yum yum, bet you can't find me. Come here. D stop. Don't swim too fast. I'm going to catch you. Come here. Don't run. Don't run. I'm going to catch you. You need to swim faster. I don't get it. Are you a turtle or a dolphin? <laughs> Am I a mermaid? No one can swim as fast as you. Come on, let's have a swimming race. Why do I even bother when I know I'm going to lose? Silly me. <laughs> Don't say that, Yum Yum. Maybe you'll win one day. Never mind, let's race another time. Can you bring me back some more pearls? I want to make necklaces and bracelets for my sisters. While waiting for Yum Yum on her oyster bed, the Little Mermaid's grandmother arrived. Grandma, can I ask you something? Do you humans look like us? No, they don't, my dear granddaughter. Humans have legs, and they use them to walk on land. If they don't know how to swim, they can drown in the sea. We also live longer than they do, and we can also live on land. Don't forget, my dear, when the day comes and you go to the surface, make sure no one hears your voice. Because one of our most important features of our voice is that it's magical. So I won't be able to sing at the surface? What's the harm in it being magical? Those who hear your voice won't be able to leave. Their ears won't hear anything but your voice. They will wait until they see you. Come on, it's very late, and that's enough information for now. Good night, my dear. Finally, the big day had arrived. It was the Little Mermaid's 18th birthday. Happy birthday, my little girl. Happy birthday, little sis. The whole family took her amongst them, celebrating her birthday. The Little Mermaid was so excited. She was going to go to the surface and see the world. She hugged her father goodbye and started swimming with Yum Yum towards the surface. Her father was shouting after her in concern. Don't forget everything I've told you. Yum Yum, look after my daughter. Are you sure, father? I'll be looking after Yum Yum. Because I'm faster than him. 
goodness, she didn't wait for me again. Finally, the little mermaid reached the surface of the sea. She was now sitting on a rock in the middle of the sea and watching the world and was admired of what she saw. My goodness, the sky is so blue. The wind feels so wonderful. The seagulls are such beautiful creatures. Everything's so new to me. They're even more beautiful than my dreams. Be careful, my princess. A ship is about to pass by. They're not supposed to see you. Uh, what's that? It's so huge. People can't swim in the water for long and can't breathe underwater. When they swim, they swim slowly. Even the fastest of them can't keep up with a ship. That's why people have been using ships since ancient times, both to travel and to carry loads. And who's the one watching the sea in front of the ship? I think this is a ship from the kingdom above, and that must be the prince of that kingdom. Be very careful. He's looking this way. Suddenly, the little mermaid felt like singing. With her magical, wonderful voice, she started singing. Princess, what are you doing? I hope the prince doesn't hear you singing. If not, he'll never leave until he finds us. Do you know that? But the little mermaid couldn't help herself, and she kept on singing. She couldn't help herself from the prince's charm. The prince was also enthralled by the voice of the little mermaid. What a wonderful voice. The girl who's singing must be just as beautiful. Point the ship towards the rocks. The voice is coming from over there. But, my prince, it's very dangerous to say the ship towards the rocks. It might hit the rocks and get damaged. The weather's also turning, and there might be a storm any minute now. Are you sure? I need to find that girl. Do whatever it takes. Yes, Your Majesty. Head towards the rocks. May God protect us. The little mermaid hid behind the rocks. The prince didn't see her, but saw the pearl bracelet that she had dropped while escaping. He shouted out to his men. Quick! Go on to land and bring me that pearl bracelet. She was a beautiful mermaid, I'm sure. As he was looking at the pearl bracelet in his hands, suddenly a terrible storm began. The sea blackened, thunder struck, and the huge waves caused the ship to hit the rocks and shatter. and the prince fell into the sea. Uh, uh, yum yum, the prince fell into the sea. Hurry, we need to save him. The little mermaid and yum yum dived into the sea and saved the prince, taking him to the shore. Please open your eyes. I saved you. Please. Please. <laughs> As they waited for the prince to awake, he slowly opened his eyes. The first thing he saw was the little mermaid's beautiful ocean blue eyes. You saved my life. Thank you. Then he saw the pearl necklace around her neck and immediately realized that she was the mermaid on the rock that he heard the voice of and was enthralled by and the owner of the pearl bracelet in his pocket. With joy. What a wonderful miracle. I searched for you all over. And now I owe you my life. Right at that moment, soldiers running to the shore saw the prince and the little mermaid. The little mermaid quickly jumped back into the sea and Yum Yum followed. The soldiers immediately took the prince to the palace and told the king everything that had happened. 
Every day, for hours, the prince watched the sea from his balcony, wondering if the little mermaid would come back again. The little mermaid who returned underwater was so unhappy that she stopped eating and drinking. She shared her secret with Yum Yum, her best friend. Yum Yum, please go to the beach and bring me news from the prince. The prince watches the sea from his balcony every day. And I think he's waiting for you to go to the shore. We must do something. But what? The king was very furious when he saw his daughter like this, but was also very sad. My dear, you have broken the rules of the sea. You were not supposed to get close to any humans. You should have listened to your elders. What's happened to you? But father, aren't you the one who said that we must act kind to all creatures? If we hadn't saved the prince, he would have died. Yes, you are right. But, according to the laws, you shouldn't have approached anyone. You are grounded. The king grounded the little mermaid, forbidding her to go to the surface. The little mermaid was very sad and couldn't stop thinking about the prince. One day, Yum Yum came to the little mermaid. Well, um, I actually know an octopus and he knows a witch who can make miracles. If you want, we can go and tell her about our problem and maybe she's able to help us. What do you say, huh? Then let's go right away. I was grounded for one month and it ends today. I can go to the surface again. They quickly swam together and went to the witch's cave. It was a dreadful place filled with snakes, scorpions and spiders that could live underwater. The witch wasn't so different from them. She had an ugly face and a terrifying voice. She met them at the entrance of the cave. I know you, little mermaid. Tell me, what do you want from me? I should have two legs just like humans. I must go to the surface. I want to find the prince and walk and dance with him on the beach. What you ask of me is very easy. I can give you two legs and two feet like humans, but you must give me something in return. Do you agree? I agree. I'll give you whatever you want, as long as I can walk and dance with the prince on the beach. Finally, the opportunity the witch had been waiting for had arrived at her doorstep. She had never liked her voice and always wanted to change it. Since you've agreed, you must give me your voice in return. Okay, okay, please give me two feet right away. I must go at once. I'm going to give you a potion. You can drink it when you go to the surface. Your feet will grow right away. But this spell will be broken in three days. If the prince doesn't propose to you within three days, you will turn into a mermaid again. But we'll never have your voice again. <laughs> the little mermaid and Yum Yum grabbed the potion and went straight to the surface. The little mermaid drank the potion and suddenly she had two legs and two feet. and she started to wait for the prince to arrive. At that moment, the prince went out to the balcony. The minute he saw the red-haired girl, he ran to the beach. Hi, I'm the prince of this country. You look like that mermaid I've been looking for, but you have feet. You can't be her. So who are you? The poor mermaid opened her mouth to explain what had happened but she had indeed lost her voice. She was so sad. The prince, seeing her in such a desperate state, felt sorry for her 
and took her to the palace. How strange. Same blue eyes, same red hair, and the same pearl necklace. But you're not a mermaid and can't talk. To whom does this pearl bracelet belong? Meanwhile, the prince's father had found a princess for the prince to marry and was pressuring him. The poor mermaid, frightened and sad, was waiting for the marriage proposal from the prince. What if he never understands that I'm the mermaid he's been looking for? What if he never recognizes me? I'll be turned back into a mermaid again. A mermaid that can't talk or sing. My games with Yum Yum will also just be a dream. The third and last day of the spell had come. The little mermaid went to the beach and was crying as she watched the sea. But Yum Yum didn't wait around. He had already went underwater and told the king everything that had happened. In anger, the king along with his whale soldiers went straight to the witch's cave. If you don't give my daughter's voice back immediately, I'll imprison you in a whale's stomach for the rest of your life. But we had a deal. As your king, I command you, give my daughter her voice back immediately. The witch, with fear, agreed and opened a glass bottle. And the little mermaid's voice was set free. Suddenly, the princess's magical, beautiful voice spread all throughout the sea. The little mermaid, who was crying on the beach, suddenly heard her own voice coming from the sea. Oh my god! This is my voice! I can talk now! Then she saw her whole family sitting on a rock, waving and blowing kisses at her. The little mermaid was now a girl with an amazing voice and with feet. The king called out to her from the rocks. Love is sometimes more important than all the rules, my dear. Go run to the prince and introduce yourself and be happy from now on, as your family will often come here to see you. The little mermaid ran to the palace excitedly. She told the prince everything. The prince, having found the mermaid he had been searching for, proposed to her right away and placed the pearl bracelet on her hand. The prince and the little mermaid got married, and the little mermaid was now the princess of the land too. Every morning, when the little mermaid woke up, she would call out to her family in the sea from the palace balcony and say thank you for everything and wave to them. The prince and little mermaid princess lived happily ever after. Once upon a time, there was a country where everyone was very happy. All the young girls of the country admired the king and queen's handsome son. The young prince was tall, had green eyes and black hair, and was also kind-hearted. The king and queen had raised him very well. The prince had become a young man who was a skilled rider and a swordsman. He was an avid reader and an excellent piano player. But since he was a perfectionist, he couldn't love or marry anyone. Mother, the girl I marry needs to be a real princess. She needs to be sensitive, polite, and have proper manners. She must be beautiful inside and out. She has to have a melodious voice, so she can accompany me while I play the piano. 
Indeed. She must also be someone who thinks of the interests of her country. Who helps everyone and acts fairly? You're right, Mother. She should also love animals and protect them, too. Since there was no princess with these characteristics in their country, the young prince decided to seek his princess in other countries. The princess he met in the first country he visited was a very beautiful girl. But one day, as they strolled in the garden, they saw a little puppy sitting under the tree. The princess suddenly started screaming. Ah! Take this dirty animal and throw it out! I don't want to see it in my garden! Her voice was so harsh and scary that the guards rushed and followed her orders. No, this behavior is unacceptable. I cannot marry someone this cruel. He politely bid her farewell and headed to another country. After a long journey, he wanted to rest in the guest house of the palace before meeting the princess. Suddenly, a horrible voice woke him up, but he couldn't tell where it was coming from. Hey, servants! I'm telling you, where is my cake? You need to be quicker. Bring my cake now! My goodness, where's that sound coming from? He followed the sound and peeked from behind the door of the room. A princess, sitting at the head of the dining table that was filled with sweets and desserts, was yelling at the servants around her while she ate voraciously. What did I tell you? Why aren't you bringing the cake that I wanted? The one I ate is not good. Quick, bring me a new one and then get out. When the prince saw this scene, he left the palace before meeting the princess. He thought that he could never marry someone who mistreats those who serve them. He headed to the third country to try his luck for the last time. When he met the third princess, he really liked her. She's very beautiful, but I shouldn't decide right away. I need to get to know her better. Just as he had thought, after some time passed and he got to know her, he realized that this princess was also not the girl he was looking for. She would always brag about herself and talk incessantly. My father is a very powerful king. Even if they gave me the whole world, I wouldn't want more. I'm also a very beautiful princess. I want to sit in my throne and have everyone around me to be my slave. The prince got very upset when he heard these words. This beautiful girl can't be my princess either. The girl I marry shouldn't be so arrogant. She should be humble and not materialistic. In sadness, he returned to his country. His mother saw how unhappy her son was and tried to comfort him. Don't be upset, my son. One day you're going to find the girl of your dreams. One night, in a terrible stormy weather, someone knocked on the palace's door. The butler who opened the door was very surprised to see such a beautiful girl in this storm. Hello, I'm the princess of the neighboring country and this is my servant. The wheel of our carriage broke. Can we be your guests and can we keep our horses safe until our carriage is repaired? They immediately reported to the king. Of course, the king agreed to have them as his guests, given such severe weather conditions. The princess was soaked and was shivering. But even so, the queen liked the princess. Please sit by the fireplace. I'll get you some dry clothes. You should eat something and rest a little. I'm sure everything will be better when you wake up. The princess changed her clothes and went downstairs to have something to eat. The prince heard what had happened and wanted to meet the guests. It is unfortunate that you had to endure such circumstances. Please make yourself comfortable. You can stay here as long as you please. Thank you very much, dear prince. I do have a request. My horses should be well taken care of. They've been miserable in this weather. Oh, and my servant should sleep well. Poor thing. He tried so hard to fix the carriage. I wouldn't want him to get sick. Don't worry. Your request shall be granted. You should rest now. 
the prince, who really liked the princess, whispered in his mother's ear. Mother, could she be the princess we have been waiting for? I wonder if the things she has told us are true. She is as kind as she is beautiful. Perhaps, my son, but let's see if she's a real princess. We'll see tonight. The queen quickly devised a plan. And she had seven mattresses put on top of each other where the princess was to sleep in. And they put a pea on the bottom of the mattresses. Yes, your room is ready, princess. You can rest now. Thank you very much, your highness. Good night. In the morning, while having breakfast, the queen started a conversation with the princess. Good morning, princess. Did you sleep well? Although the bed seemed comfortable, it felt as if I had a huge rock under my back. Unfortunately, I couldn't sleep at all. Upon hearing this, the queen signaled to the prince in approval without the princess noticing. After breakfast, the prince and princess went for a stroll in the garden. The princess told him about her country and her family. She had wonderful plans for her country. While strolling the garden, they saw a kitten. The princess affectionately picked it up and put it in a safe place. Isn't this such a beautiful creature, my prince? When they entered the palace, the prince started playing the piano. The princess accompanied him. Her voice was so melodious that everyone in the palace listened with admiration. The prince, who had liked the princess from the moment he saw her, thought that, that he had found the princess of his dreams. After a couple of days, it was time for the princess to return to her country. My prince, thank you for everything. You've been a great host to me, my servant, and my horses as well. But I must go back to my country. The young prince didn't want her to leave. He was sure that she was the girl he had been looking for. And so he shared with the queen and king that he was thinking of marrying her. Mother, father, I'm sure you are thinking the same. This girl is a real princess. She doesn't give orders and asks politely from her servants, and also thanks them. She loves all creatures. She's polite, good-hearted, and smart. I'm sure she's the one. Okay, son, whenever you like, we will go to her country and ask her father, the king, for his permission for marriage. The prince, who got an approval from the king and queen, asked the princess for her hand in marriage. Actually, the princess also liked the prince the moment she met him. Her love grew as they spent time together. So, when the prince proposed and gave her a ring, the princess happily accepted. The celebration lasted for 40 days and 40 nights, and after that day, the prince and the princess lived happily ever after. Hey guys! Subscribe to our channel Kondo-san and watch the most popular fairy tales, cartoons, and nursery rhymes. Don't forget to click the bell for notifications.